Imagine you're the CEO of one of these companies on the day these headlines come out. These are results of buyers not knowing enough about suppliers' environmental and social sustainability. I'm about to show you a product that helps avoid and prevent these problems. You see, in order to sell all this stuff, suppliers provide everything from screws to leather to paper. The buyers don't have any information on their sus environmental sustainability or any way to help them improve. And that was fine until a few years ago. Nobody paid attention anyway. Today, the world is different. Consumer shareholders and the media are increasingly paying attention to environmental and social responsibility, but companies are flying blind, even though they know that this is critical for good business practice. How do we know this? Um, we've been running a successful consulting company for the last five years, helping clients with these issues. Um, as a professor at SJSU, I see my students get hired at leading companies managing these issues internally. We created this tool because we know the field and we realized that a critical need wasn't and couldn't be met with just a consulting approach. And now we have a solution to this problem. Uh, we've created the first truly unified platform that helps buyers understand and manage their supply chain sustainability, as well as evaluate supply chain risk and help their suppliers be better. Not to mention make the whole field less confusing, like Yelp did for choosing a restaurant. And today, we're enrolling the largest corporations in the world in Supply Shift. How do we do that? Um, I'm going to show you, walk you through an example. Imagine you're a LexCorp, a Fortune 500 conglomerate, and you've seen your competitors go through a scandal involving a supplier releasing toxic waste into a river in China, and you don't want that happening to you. At the same time, you want to take advantage of the expanding market for sustainable products. So you've signed up for Supply Shift, you've enrolled your suppliers, and you've sent out your first questionnaire. Now, Supply Shift has an interface for creating and um, sending out questionnaires, but I want to jump to something that makes Supply Shift truly innovative. Once LexCorp receives the answers, they now have efficient tools to understand and assess their supply chain sustainability and evaluate risk. In this example, they're going to want to see which of their suppliers are in the region, which have high water pollution outputs, and make water pollution outputs more important than, say, um, recycled water content. This enables LexCorp to understand which of its suppliers are part of the water pollution problem in China. You want to know how to fix it because you don't want your products to be associated with poisoned water. And now comes the part that will make the products that you buy more sustainable. First of all, your suppliers get a very similar dashboard. Now Space Leaf Sprockets knows where it stands relative to its industry peers, and that's a game changer. Right now, suppliers submit questionnaires, and they frequently don't know where they stand. Um, they're inundated with questionnaires that they are incredibly frustrated with. This helps them. Once Space Lease Sprockets has found out where they stand relative to, the, to its industry peers, they now will go and be in, incentivized to innovate because maintaining buyer relationships is so important. And Space Lease Sprockets has yet another reason to improve their scores. They know that with one click of a button, you, LexCorp, have access to information about other suppliers in the industry. And so now, LexCorp has access to more sustainable buyers, and more sustainable buyers get more business. Like the Yelp effect, this system rewards good actors, and bad actors are forced to improve or suffer the consequences. Now, Supply Shift has lots of other features that solve other problems, and if it wasn't for the six-minute time limit, I'd talk your ear off for an hour. But we should talk about the market. Um, if I came to you with this idea three years ago, uh, I, you would have told me that I was disconnected from market realities, and you would have been right. Um, today, the world is different. Suppliers are being asked for information, and corporations are reporting to the GRI 
the reports are skyrocketing. Um, companies are spending billions of dollars on sustainability. Um, the companies that report to, G to these um, to these registries, um, there's a, there was a survey that the, Gen the Governance and Accountability Institute did that showed that Fortune 500 reporting to sustainability registries has gone from 20 to 57 percent just between 2010 and 2011. Um, and these companies, turns out, are actually more successful over the long term. Shareholders and the media are increasingly clamoring for this information. And companies, leading companies and industry groups are pushing the envelope, but they haven't had the tools to actually, um, to actually get this information. Uh, we're working with essentially a white space. Um, currently, we're enrolling beta partners in, um, in Supply Shift, and now, once companies decide to put out better products, they know exactly which suppliers to use so that the products are as sustainable as they can be and so that they don't have to wake up to environmental disaster headlines. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> Judges? So who's going to pay you a lot of money for this service? Fantastic question. Um, at the moment, so this product was developed um, in frequent consultation and feedback with just under a dozen, let's call them Fortune 200s. Um, there are companies that are currently paying a whole bunch of money to collect this information using things like Excel and SurveyMonkey kind of tools. Um, and we have four companies right now that we're in, in various stages of beta discussions with that are very much interested in paying us lots of money for this. How, how much would they pay you for an annual subscription, or, or uh, how, there, how do you think about pricing? There are two subscription and pricing levels, um, but on average, so our, the average company that we're talking with has seven and a half thousand suppliers. Um, one company that we're talking to has thirty thousand, and and the biggest one is seventy thousand suppliers. And the charges there, there are two, two levels of of subscriptions. But for the for the network for the main product. Um, it's about twenty, thirty dollars per supplier plus an annual subscription fee per year. Yes. Do you provide auditing services or a vetting service? Uh, just the self-reporting on a questionnaire. I'm sure that you know the people in Bangladesh claimed that the factory was fine. Absolutely. This was this was one of the biggest challenges that we had um, is to figure out because folks that self-report are not often. I should say, are not always honest. Um, and so we have two ways of dealing with this problem. The first is that we have um, an, al an internal algorithm that looks at a whole bunch of pieces of information about a company and provides a data quality score. So the buyer can see that, oh, well, there's something, something funny about the data that and the way that the suppliers are interacting with the system and the kinds of data that they're providing. So you might want to ask for more. And then if the buyer is really concerned, then we have partnered with a third-party ver verifier that can go out and audit, and this is an additional fee, uh, that can go out and audit the particular facility or the particular company. And why wouldn't you do that? I mean, if, if sustainability is important and I were a supplier, I'd actually want to opt into some sort of audit process to prove that I have the requirements that are necessary to be able to supply to an Apple or something like that. So why don't you turn that into a business model? You can get the suppliers to pay you for that, and then you end up with a network that's really strong and has good quality. So um, we've toyed with the idea of charging suppliers, and we realized that um, we offer that option. So buyers can say, you know what, just charge my suppliers directly. Um, but a lot of buyers really were excited about the fact that they control, it's, they are in control, and they are our client. And so there is no potential for conflict of interest, conflicts of interest, let's put it that way. I'll also add that this, the, the demand for this service is created by the buyer. And that's where we're fulfilling a demand that's already there. We don't have to create the demand for it. Suppliers, they don't have to fill out questionnaires. They prefer not to. They do it because they're asked to. So we're just providing a service 
or you know, a, a solution to buyers that are already doing something in a kind of mundane way. What's the incentive for uh, buyers to want to share who their suppliers are with in this sort of marketplace thing you're trying to set up? Um, so the way the system works is that um, there are levels of an anonymity. So the buyer sees, of course, the names of their suppliers. When they look at the whole system, they see anonymized and non-persistent anonymized names of other suppliers. So they don't actually know who they are, nor who they supply. So they can, so they reach, out, the they can reach out and contact them, and then that supplier might say, you know what, we're exclusive to a different buyer, we can't talk to you. Or they might say, oh great, let's start a conversation. But um, from a supplier standpoint, the only things that they know, so they don't know who their competition is, it's all non-persistently anonymized, and they only know who, who their buyers are that requested particular pieces of information. Okay. And, and a really interesting aspect of the system is that if, if I'm a buyer and I ask questions, other buyers don't get to see those answers unless they've also asked the same questions. So um, you don't really share your information until someone else also shares their information, just by design of how questions are asked. So it, it protects you until someone else also decides to do that. Can you guys talk a, a bit about your backgrounds? or like why you're right to be building this? Um, so we, we both um, uh, were in graduate school together um, and we both have PhDs for in environmental studies and, and different aspects of it. And one of the things that we realized was that we really could put our academic training to use in this field because we, we really believe that we have big problems. Um, the planet needs, needs a little bit of help um, and we really think that business solutions are the way to do it. Um, I really believe that when people have the right information, they will make the right decisions. Um, and in this case, I, I, I really believe that people that are in decision-making positions, they don't want to do bad things. Um, it's just they often end up happening simply because they didn't have those numbers in front of them. Um, and I really, I really do think that our background gives us the credibility. That's why customers are talking to us, um, is that we've been running a consulting company and you know, a lot of these are our past clients. They know that we know the field. So you have existing relationships with these, these buyers yes. and the suppliers? Yes, we do. And that, that's really helped us develop the product. You know, we've been listening to them the whole time. We know the industry groups. A lot of the, the drivers for this are coming from sustainability industry groups that are defining what sustainability means for that group. And we have direct connections with them. They're inviting us to their conferences and things like that. Any, any other judges? Any more questions? Is this something you guys would consider investing in, the VCs among you? Well, I've got one of my companies to use it. Um, Jawbone, which manufactures a lot of products, you know, the up band, speakers like that, I mean, they care about sustainability a lot, so I'd imagine they're a target for you as a customer. I meant to ask you, did Marissa really join the board of Jawbone? <laughs> That's awesome. Did she? Is it confirmed or not? Or what is know. the, uh, <laughs> what's your current competition in the, uh, <laughs> yeah. in the consulting know. space? I mean, are there large firms doing this? We need to get that story, but uh, right Com now. Competition in the consulting space? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, are there like larger outfits who are starting to get into this to work with, you know, the Johnson Johnson consulting outfits who are, you know, somebody they're paying to do something else, uh, you know, they're asking to handle this for them as well. How does that work? So, um, you know, the network piece of it can't be met with a consulting approach. Right. So, but I mean, what's the, what's but, the what's the market trying to do to solve the problem right now? So at the moment, um, there are pieces of what is our system in some cases out there. So, for instance, there's one um, one of the things that our system does is you can customize scorecards. So you can ask the questions that you really care about, and we use public um, scorecards that are in use today. Right. So there's a system out there that is somewhat similar to ours, but they have a proprietary scorecard and then there's only one. So you either ask their questions or you, or not. Mm -hmm. um, there are other systems that basically put a consultant in between the buyer and the supplier. And so the buyer says to the supplier, well, I'm interested in greenhouse gases. And then the 
consultant develops a scorecard and then sends it back and then goes back and then the consultant sends it to the supplier, gets the information, aggregates it and presents it to the buyer. Um, one of the things that we're very fortunate about is that our customers are very sophisticated. So heads of corporate sustainability at leading corporations, they know exactly the questions that are their risk factor. They know exactly the things that they need to know. Um, they know what questions they want to ask. Um, our system helps with that choice because one of the things that it does is as you ask more questions, um, the popularity ranking per industry of different questions goes up. So if you are not quite sure, you want to say, oh, I want to ask my electronics manufacturers, what are people asking electronics manufacturers? What, what kinds of questions, right? Is it conflict minerals? Is it um, labor standards? Is it um, CO2 emissions, et cetera? So the system gives you some guidance, but it also allows you to customize questions whichever way you want. <coughs> Excuse me. So it seems to me, based on like the news stories you presented, at the beginning of your presentation, uh, consumer interest in, in the practices of businesses is increasing, is that correct? Absolutely. So what are the forces that are, that are driving that to increase, and are those going to continue boosting the consumer interest? Or? I think that the, the new generation of consumers that is coming on the market, say 18 to 25 years old, are increasingly, and surveys, I don't have the numbers of the, off the top of my head, but surveys show that um, the new kind of gen, past gen, Y, all of these consumers are now asking questions about environmental sustainability. Um, environmental awareness is increasing and, and brands recognize that, you know, whereas stories like Apple's. Really? Does an 18 year old say, what are the, how many conflict minerals are in this iPhone? Like I, I get the sense that they don't, they, they sort of want to appear to care but that when it comes down to you know the stuff that they buy, they you know they still go to Walmart and they still buy whatever they feel like buying, and they still drive the cars and they still do everything else. I think that if a story yeah. comes out on that 18-year-old's Facebook that that they care that 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 such a company is uh, responsible for deaths in of workers in China, that they are more likely to care because they're more socially connected and more global than. I'm not saying that a given 18-year-old will care, but they're more likely to care about environmental and social responsibility than somebody who is, say, 35. I think that the, that, that the proof is in the pudding. Every time you see one of these headlines come out, everyone scrambles to do something and to upgrade their system and do something new. Right. And if you look five years ago when uh, energy and carbon management software came out for the internal operations of a company, is this, people don't really need this. Now that market has taken off, and this is the next stage of it, and so the timing is, is perfect. We've yeah. anticipated it. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing it in risk factors and public disclosure. You're seeing it as mm -hmm. criteria yeah. for investors. I mean, it's it's. I mean, def look at Walmart spending right now. Wait, on wait, Walmart gives a shit about this stuff. I, I actually uh, I just got the impression that Walmart didn't. Walmart they, has the biggest, the biggest sustainability biggest. program in the world. Uh, uh -huh. They just saved 150 million bucks this year due to their sustainability efforts alone. And, and they've developed the Sustainability Consortium, which has 75 large companies that are kind of joining their force to, to find how to measure sustainability, which will integrate perfectly with our system. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we so know our stuff, but... We're out of time, but great job, you guys. That was <laughs> Thank you. Supply Shift. Thanks. Thank you.